Let's talk about the use of big knives and not so big knives. Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Guide of Choice. So recently I have been doing a bit of a deep dive on certain knife fighting methods, um, particularly European and American ones, particularly with a view to World War I, also World War II, and delving back into the Victorian age as well, and all the way back into the period of Bowie, jo uh, Jim Bowie, or Bowie if you prefer. And um, when I'm looking at things like sort of um, Arkansas toothpicks and various types of Bowie knife, um, I think there's a lot to be said for the methods that they were employed with having a relationship to swordsmanship when they are big enough. Now the question is, when does the blade become short enough or small enough or light enough that you can no longer use it with that method? Now what I'm not going to go into in this particular video, although I'll probably look at it in a future video, is what that method is. What is that method of use? But in a nutshell, without going into a huge amount of depth, it's essentially like using it a bit like a miniature sword or a, a machete, okay? And there is a certain blade width, uh, sorry, blade length, at which you can use the blade to oppose the opponent's attacks, either against their weapon or their hand or their arm, which becomes very difficult when the blade becomes really, really small. It's not only a question of length, although it is, I would say, primarily a matter of length, it's also a matter of heft in the blade as well. So for example, if we go to a smaller blade here, and I'll talk more about specific lengths in a minute, I could just about use the uh, Bowie knife methods that I personally um, favour with a blade this small, but that is largely because this blade has a fair amount of girth on it as well, um, which means that you can oppose incoming blows um, or, or even weapons in some case with this amount of mass of blade because it has a certain amount of mass and heft to it. When blades start to get very light and <clears throat> very slender, it's not only a matter of length but also their slenderness, I find that becomes less and less the case. Now you will notice that this is actually a Victorian uh, knife that I'm holding but it has some similarities to the Fairburn Sykes dagger. Now the Fairburn Sykes dagger is a very particular design of dagger you could call it a stiletto in a way, um, designed by uh, Fairburn during the Second World War based on his experiences in China as a policeman um, in law enforcement. And he witnessed a lot of uh, knife crime, essentially, and uh, garnered a lot of information, but also a lot of respect for that as well. Now, uh, he developed a, a combat system, I would call it a knife fighting system, because it was an all-in combat uh, system, which is very well documented and very famous. It was most famously employed by by uh, the commandos um, and the, what became the SAS, and it was also carried on through Applegate um, in um, American Special Forces as well. I won't go into that, maybe we'll look at that in depth in a future video. But the Fairburn Sykes dagger is a very specifically narrow blade. I don't actually own one at the moment, I have done in the past, but I don't have one. Uh, but a blade um, that is six something inch, inches long, so it's not very long, and it's fairly slender, not normally more than an inch wide at the base, and it is double-edged. Now it is primarily a stabbing implement, but what might surprise you is that Fairbairn actually uses it for cutting quite a lot, partly as a distraction, but he does also use it for cutting. He uses it for cutting in a couple of different ways. He doesn't necessarily chop with it in the way that you might do with uh, something like that, um, but he slashes with it and also after stabbing he cuts out to make the wound more grievous. Pretty grim, but there we go. You can read about it in uh, Get Tough or, or any of his um, writings. Now, um, what's interesting to me is that if I try and use something akin to a commando dagger, or a Fairburn Sykes dagger, if I try and use it in the method that I use for Bowie knife, and I should again just mention that the f form that I use for Bowie knife is somewhat similar to Morozzo's use of the large dagger and is inspired by various descriptive accounts of the use of the bowie knife at the time and is also heavily, heavily influenced by fencing of the time, particularly the um, foil and the sabre, okay? So it is my belief that the majority of instructors of bowie knife who were places like New Orleans who were teaching bowie knife fighting, they were fencing instructors and they were basing, I think a lot of the fundamentals of what they were teaching were based on foil and sabre, but then bringing the use of the left hand, I would say as well. 
that again for a future video. But what I find interesting is that when you get to a certain size, smallness of size, and this would be it, you cannot really effectively use that method, I'll call it the swordsmanship method, you can't really, or bow knife method, you can't really use that method with these knives. These have to be used somewhat differently. So what is the minimum size that you can use what I would call the swordsmanship method of a knife? Well, clearly this, okay? This is a, a massive, um, probably South American, certainly Latin American um, uh, antique um, Bowie knife. Do we call it a Bowie knife? I don't know, a bush knife of some sort. Um, it's sort of a machete, it's sort of a Bowie knife. Clearly it's got a clip point, so it's had got thrusting potential. And I personally predominantly use the Bowie knife as a thrusting weapon. But the cutting capacity is very important, particularly in defensive terms and sometimes it, you know, when an opening presents itself to slash or cut. Um, so clearly something this big can do it. And just to give you a rough indication, um, I'm going to use inches because I'm old fashioned like that. Um, this is a 17 and a half inch blade. So, I mean, this is this is the extreme end massive, but you don't need something that big to do it with. If I was using something more like a Arkansas toothpick, I would happily also use this type of blade, despite the fact it's not as broad at the end with the same method, because it's still big enough and hefty enough that it's got enough chopping potential to oppose things and chop into incoming uh, hands and arms with it. Um, and it's got enough length, okay? And the length is important. Why is that important? Well, quite simply, it's to do with margins of error, okay? When the blade gets too short, it becomes too risky to do a lot of these types of defenses where you're actually cutting into the incoming um, incoming attack because you don't have enough blade to reliably do it, okay? But this is um, this is definitely, um, actually I know the length of this is nine and a half inches, I was gonna measure it, but um, nine and a half inches is my kind of happy space. So nine and a half, 10 inches, I have to say, is my preferred length for a Bowie knife or Arkansas toothpick type thing. Now, if we come down to these, these are both uh, 19th century hunting daggers. They're both uh, Anglo-Indian or British at least. This one's actually made by Brooks and Crooks of, um, of Birmingham and has the word Explorer etched on the blade. So that's late 19th, perhaps early 20th century, about 1890 to 1910, I would say. And um, that has an eight inch blade, and this has about a seven inch, uh, seven and a half inch, sorry, blade. Now, both of these, I start to struggle a bit with blades of that length and that size with this method, but I can still do it. Okay, now if we go down further to, uh, this has only got just over a four inch blade, I cannot do the, what I will call the swordsmanship style of uh, knife use with a blade this small. It, the margin for error is just too big with a blade of that short. I don't have enough reach to, to basically occupy someone's hand or arm with that amount of blade. I mean, I can do it, but it doesn't work well, okay? So again, we're talking about degrees. We're not talking black and white here. We're talking about a, a grayscale or a spectrum. So this is really suboptimal, and I would use a knife of that kind of size in a completely different way to how I conventionally use a, a Bowie knife. Now, um, this at six inches, I, which is a on paper a Bowie knife, a typical clipped back. This is again a 19th century um, British take on a Bowie knife, um, probably from again about 1890 to 1910. Um, this is about the minimum that I would try to use my method of the swordsmanship method of um, knife use. This is not any more what I would class as a large knife, but six inches for me is the absolute minimum. So folks, uh, Matt Easton needs a minimum of six inches, but frankly, I'd much, much prefer nine and a half inches. So, uh, and that's really all that I'm gonna say about it in this, in this video. I will talk a little bit more about some details of the method in the future, but when I'm looking at World War II combative, combatives uh, manuals, even stuff like by Applegate and stuff like that, I find a K-bar is doable. You can use a K-bar like I would use a larger Bowie knife. 
um, but it's getting towards the lower end of the spectrum and really six inches is about the minimum and I think at that point you want to start thinking about engaging the other person's attacks in a different way rather than with your blade whereas when you've got something which has enough length on it like this you've got enough blade there and enough heft in the blade therefore enough leverage that you can happily and easily interpose incoming attacks either by um, cutting, chopping, slicing, uh, push cutting into the incoming attacks, either the weapon or the person's hand or the person's arm with the blade. I find that with shorter blades than six inches, it becomes increasingly risky and you want to employ it in different ways. I hope that's been mildly interesting. Um, I'm uh, super interested in hearing your thoughts on this subject. If you yourself practice knife fighting, what systems do you follow? What manuals do you follow or what uh, living lineages do you follow? Do you do Filipino martial arts? Do you do European martial arts, uh, modern military combatives? What do you do? I'm very interested to hear if you've got any links to uh, what you practice or the things that you follow stick them below very happy to have a look at them thanks a lot for watching uh, if you're not subscribed please consider doing so and hopefully I'll see you back on the channel really soon cheers folks thanks for watching we've got extra videos on patreon please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already cheers folks